keyboards are one of the most abused pieces of hardware out there. They practically last forever once you buy them and um, chances are you just leave them on the desk collecting dust over time and you still continue using them anyway. So I had this old keyboard with me which I pretty much been using for years and it suddenly died. It's one of those old membrane keyboards where there is uh, pretty much no chance of revival. So I thought just for fun let me just uh, take it apart and see how much dust it has collected over the years. And that led to me making this video that you should really be cleaning your keyboards more often. Getting into keyboards is pretty easy. Uh, they are usually held together by one of these um, X mark screws or whatever you call them. So grab your screwdriver and work through the screws and uh, you will be treated with the electronic relay if you are using a membrane keyboard. It's pretty fascinating to see how your keystrokes are registered on this uh, thin piece of plastic which has some traces printed on it. it. Looks amazing. I think I'm going to use it as a backdrop on one of my LEDs. It may look very cool and futuristic. Anyway, once you have removed this back plate, uh, pretty much all the keys can be removed by uh, just a simple nudge on the back and they have this rubber cushion thingy underneath them which basically registers as a key press. Yeah, it's a painstaking process of just keeping them in one place because you do need them because otherwise they don't have any spring mechanism built into them. So if you lose these, then this membrane keyboard will not have a functioning set of keys. But once we get rid of them though, you can actually see how much dust is sitting underneath every single keycap. I was actually shocked that someone was probably using this on a daily basis. Well, it's not really my keyboard, I borrowed it from a friend, which died in my usage. Don't tell his mom. So I started cleaning out the keycaps, uh, just pushing them out one by one with the help of some kind of a plastic pick or a broken toothbrush. My fingers were pretty sore after the two hours I spent doing this. But you know, there is some kind of a satisfactory experience to cleaning something. Even though this keyboard is dead, uh, I found great pleasure in cleaning that for some reason. It could be a weird form of OCD, I don't know. But since I pretty much record everything that I do, I took this chance to tell you that you really need to be cleaning your keyboards if you have been using it for say over a month or even once every two weeks in case there's a lot of dust flying in your room every day. I found out a couple of interesting things about keyboards like these uh, large keys have this uh, metal bracket kind of a thing behind them that basically stabilizes them. Because uh, when these keys are only mounted in two to three places, chances are they'll wobble a lot more than the regular keys. So this metal bracket thingy keeps them in place and uh, registers an even press no matter where you click on the keyboard. Well, at least on good keyboards that is. In case the uh, manufacturer has not included a good quality strong metal bracket behind it, the keys will be very wobbly and uh, they won't register a click, uh, especially the space bar when you press it on the right or the left corners. That's why you notice that common problem with cheap keyboards. So when you're done cleaning them, be sure to reinstall them, otherwise the keys will not have the same uh, uniformly distributed feel to them. Especially the longer keys like shift, space and even the enter key. Once you've cleaned up everything and uh, it's looking nice and neat, simply arrange the keys back in the same order. In case you're confused as to uh, which key goes where, then uh, well, you should have taken a photograph before you started dismantling it or uh, it's pretty easy to put them back by referring to an image that you can find online. Look at this PCB, that's responsible for uh, controlling the lights and uh, relaying the key presses across the entire key. Interesting how small it is compared to the rest of the keyboard, huh? Well, just reinstall it back in its original place, uh, realign this uh, matrix membrane looking thing and screw the back panel on and voila, it's working fine. Oh shit, I forgot mine was already broken. Oh well, it was a fun thing to do anyway. It's not like my time is worth a lot. Yeah, I know, this video is probably not as helpful as some of my other videos. But I hadn't uploaded since over 45 days and uh, I couldn't let this channel just freeze away like this. So I had to push something out and besides, this is not a total waste of your time, is it? I mean, even if it was, fuck it. It's quarantine, it's not like you have something better to do anyway. Yeah, well, thanks for watching this really quick video. Uh, consider subscribing if you'd like to uh, see some troubleshooting and uh, other tech tips here. If you like gadget reviews and comparisons and things like that, then uh, you can check out my main channel, that's youtube.com slash thehopelessgeek, because that's my real name. Alright then, I'll see you next time. Cheers.